Hi and welcome back. Today I'm going to be covering three W's, Second World War, printed in 1991 and designed by Bill Banks. Second World War is an army level game of the Second World War in Europe. It covers air, naval, and ground combat. Second World War is designed to be a fast, simple game, which is an ideal introduction to wargaming. Once this game is mastered, a new gamer will be familiar with the basic terminology and mechanics of board wargaming. A quick list of components. The game consists of a 17 by 11 inch map, 80 die cut counters, this set of rules, and a front piece, which um, served as the cover of the game, and it's on the back of the turn record chart. Additionally, you'll need a six-sided die to play the game. The map is overlaid with a hexagonal grid, which is used to regulate movement and combat, and the counters represent the forces available to each country. And to give an idea of the different unit types and the nomenclature used on each one, you have an infantry example. tells you the unit size, the unit type, the unit ID, uh, its combat strength on the left, and its movement factor on the right. Air units have pretty much the same type of information. The only difference is they have a range factor, which is used to perform different types of missions um, at that range from where the air unit is located. The aircraft's movement um, factor is basically like an air transport um, number where it can go up to like 10 hexes but it has to stop and then during the combat phase it can go out for it can affect anything within four hexes. Anyway that's pretty much the basic introduction of the game. And when I come back, I'm going to do setup and reinforcement, sequence of play, and probably zones of control. Setup and reinforcements. You have the initial setup uh, at the start of the game. Each player will put his units on the map uh, in the indicated places. The United Kingdom will put his units in the United Kingdom, Gibraltar, Malta, Cyprus, Egypt, and Palestine. And it gives you the number and type. Um, to be set up in those areas. You have pretty much a free uh, setup. Um, you don't have to put units exactly where they say, but of course in Scapa Flow, which is only a one hex island, you're going to have to put those units. That indicates France, you can set up in France, Corsica, North Africa, and Syria with the indicated units. Poland, anywhere in Poland, the USSR can put their units uh, anywhere in the USSR. Germany, Germany or East Poland. And they have some restrictions on where they have to put like in Hamburg and that type of thing. And then over here we have Italy, which consists of Italy, Sardinia, Sicily, Albania, and Libya. And then you have reinforcements that will come onto the board, and they will come onto the board according to the turn record track. Which is located right here. It's divided up, divided up by months <coughs> and years, and the counters will come on during the appropriate turn in which they are allowed to. And the reinforcements will appear from time to time as indicated. Reinforcements are placed in the capital of the appropriate country unless otherwise indicated. Forts may be placed in any hex controlled by the owning player. And if the hex on which the reinforcement is scheduled to appear is controlled by the enemy, the reinforcement is lost. Let's see, we have the sequence of play next. <coughs> It's a fairly simple, straightforward um, uh, sequence, I guess we'll call it. 
There's a total of 21 game turns. Each game turn is divided into two player turns, and each player turn is divided into a number of phases. In each spring, summer, and fall game turn, we follow the following sequence. The Axis Players Reinforcement Phase, the Movement Phase, the Axis Players Combat and Supply Phase. Then the Allied Player then performs the same four phases, and at the conclusion of his turn he advances the marker on the turn track one space. And that concludes the game turn. Now Winter is handled differently, and we'll get to that back in the back of the rules. There are Zones of Control. All units exert a zone of control into the six adjacent hexes. Note, however, that a land unit never exerts a zone of control into an all water hex side. Uh, let's see. Effects. On entering the zone of control a little, of a land or air unit, a land unit must stop and move no further that turn although he may advance or retreat. A unit may never move directly from one enemy zone of control to another. Thus, a unit which starts a movement phase in an enemy zone of control must move to a hex not in an enemy zone of control before entering another enemy zone of control. And briefly, we have borders. Players can ignore the zone of control of neutral or friendly units. And then we will go on to stacking later. Stacking in general, units hostile to one another may not, occupy, may not occupy the same hex except for paratroop assaults and units which are making an amphibious assault. The maximum number of units a player may have stacked in a single hex is two land units plus one fort plus one air unit plus two fleets. An exception to that is the USSR may not stack more than one army group unit in a single hex. So they can have like an army unit and like a core or something like that, but they cannot stack two of their um, army groups in the same hex. Uh, land movement is pretty much like normal wargaming. You get a movement point allowance. Movement's always voluntary. Hexes cost various amounts of movement points to enter or cross. And then we have some special rules like for Gibraltar, the Straits of Gibraltar. Um, land units may find themselves on different, two different land masses at once. This is permissible and causes no movement penalty. Fleets, the presence of an enemy fleet on a coast, hex does not inhibit movement of land units. If a land unit is moved into a hex containing a fleet, the fleet must immediately retreat. Forts, forts are immobile. They attack and defend and exert zones of control just like any other land unit. The owning player may voluntarily disband forts during the supply phase. Disbanded forts become available on the following turn as replacements.